Cosmo, sit. This is Cosmo. I'm gonna manipulate him to a sit. Sit. Remember, don't repeat a command over and over again. You manipulate or do something, some uh, way to motivate the dog to want to do it. All right, so uh, Cosmo has separation anxiety. In this video, I'm gonna go over some tips to helping uh, prevent separation anxiety, uh, as well as uh, tips uh, just to stop the dog from reacting to it. Now, separation anxiety is essentially a panic state that the dog goes into. The guardians here know not to do this, but a lot of people get mad when their dog has accidents when it has separation anxiety and they're like, you peed and crapped all over the house. They are literally so scared they are losing control of their bowels. The worst thing to do would be to punish them for that. And again, the guardians here aren't doing that. I have a lot of other people watch these videos. So basically, um, I'm gonna talk about separation anxiety first and then I'll talk about how to fix it later uh, or the technique that I like to use. So the very first thing you wanna make sure you don't do is punish the dog, get upset when they do it. Recognize it's a panic attack and any punishment is gonna make it worse. So basically for uh, separation anxiety, uh, dogs are very social creatures. They're not used to or practiced at being alone. We get a dog, we bring it to our house, they have 100% access to us. And then we leave and go to work and then they go to 0%. That is the biggest range there possibly is. So what I like to do is help the dog practice being alone in easier capacities. And I do that by teaching the dog to stay. But before we do that, go ahead and hit it again. Uh, while he's over there, we don't need him for this part of the shot. We're training him to go into his kennel. Uh, he doesn't like the kennel, so we have an automatic treat dispensing toy in there. So every time he goes in there, a treat falls out. All right, so there are a lot of things, and the guardian recognizes that, and we'll see if, there we go. So this sound, and you'll see him come back in the shot, is this is the guardian's keys. So this sound is almost like a clarion call, that this means that she's about to leave me. So you saw he came over and he's like, I'm on top of him, and even though I'm not the guardian, but he's like, that's the sound. So I'm gonna go stay with that person because that usually means that that person's about to leave. So what we wanna do is every once in a while when you're not leaving, go over there, pick this up, put them in your pocket, or put them in your pocket, and then put them back and then go sit down. So we're disassociating the sound with our actual departure. Um, we have a lot of things that we do as a departure ritual. Sometimes we sit in a certain spot, put our shoes on maybe here. Uh, we put our uniform on, we grab sunglasses. We might put our sunglasses on in a special way. We grab our purse, our portfolio, our briefcase, or whatever it is. So one of the things you might wanna do is have you guys film each other as you're getting ready for work and see all the individual steps and try to film in a way where you can see the dog in the foreground and you in the background crash. Pass the train, remember to reward that, three seconds. Um, okay, so basically what we wanna do is systematically identify what all the individual, we call these triggers are, and practice this. Pick it up and put it down and then go sit down. So now, it used to mean the guarantee they're leaving, now it doesn't mean that. Matter of fact, most of the time I hear this, they're not leaving. So, because the dogs actually recognize we're leaving long before we leave and they start pacing around, start breathing heavy, and they're getting themselves wound up. So what you wanna do is identify all those individual triggers and help him practice being exposed to those triggers without actually having you leave. All right, so I'll go ahead and give him again, uh, hit him again. By hit him, I mean deliver a treat. Don't ever hit your dog. Um, there we go, oh, you got a twofer, yes. All right, so um, what you want, once you find out what all those things are, you can and you deprogram it and you can pick up your keys or do all these things, you're good to go and you're ready to, uh, and you would also be teaching them to stay at the same time. Um, also, avoid making a big production when you leave. Are you gonna be okay, Cosmo? Are you gonna hang out? Are you gonna be able to hang out? Dogs sleep about 16 to 17 hours a day. What we say is like, you'll be okay when I go to work. We should be like, you little bastard, you gotta stay here and sleep, but I gotta go home, go and bring home the bacon. Crash. Pass the train, just waiting for him to do it on his own. All right, so um, so now I'm gonna talk about uh, how what I like to do to teach dogs uh, to get over separation anxiety is helping them practice being alone in an easier capacity. And I do this by teaching them to stay. So I'm gonna, in this section, I'm gonna go over how to teach you how to stay, and then at the end, I'm gonna teach you how to uh, explain how to combine all these things together. So when you teach your dog to stay, there's actually three elements of teaching your dog to stay. First for duration, then for distance, then for distraction. Most of us try to train our dog with all three of us at the same time. Stay, and we start backing away, and we're in a park and there's dogs there. It's the hardest version. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna teach him to stay by first doing duration, having him stay for up to five minutes. So I have my treats in this hand ready to go, and I keep it at my waist or behind my back so he's not triggering on this. And I wait for him to look at me, Stay halfway distance between you and the dog, and then pull your hand back. One, two, three. Stay. I want him to see the stop sign when I'm telling him to start the stay and when I'm delivering the treat. I want you to think of the stay as a, as a bookend. We start this each stay and we stop the stay during training. 
Eventually, your second bookend will be the release word, which we're going to use the word break for him, which I've already identified with the guardians. So uh, now, my puppy quest, I had to do about three weeks of one second stays. We think it's super easy just to stay there. Why are you not giving me the treats? Do you want me to shake? Do you want me to roll over? Do you want me to sit up? Do you want me to... So they're going to start doing what I call the floor shifts. That's why we want to practice without any distance until we get to five minutes. Stay. I count uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Stay. Now, if he prefer, if you start off with him to sit and he lays down, just go back to go to a lay down. All he really has to do is stay in the area. He could go from a sit and oscillate up and down, but I would prefer that they just stay in one. But as long as you stay in the area, that's sufficient. So um, when you're doing this, also don't maintain eye contact the whole time because as soon as you leave eye contact, he'll break the stay. So that was three seconds, then six seconds. I'm going to do a nine second here. So stay to start it. And I count in my head. I'm breaking eye contact. Because eventually we're going to be out of the room and he's not going to be able to see us. And so once we get up to about nine, I, when I do delivery, I keep my hand, single hand, about even with my elbow. Stay. So the treats are in this hand. This is signal only. All right. So now I've done three. I'll do one more. Stay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do this in your head. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Stay. And avoid going stay on top of his face. Keep it far enough away where you can see it. Always count your head or have a stopwatch so you know where you're at. If you go from 15 to 20 and at 19 he gets up and walks away, you need to back up to 18 and practice the previous mark. If you're not counting, you won't know where you're at. All right, so now we've done four stays. And I would recommend you do like anywhere from like four to 10, depending on, but make sure that the last one is a good one. Otherwise, the last thing you remember is the last repetition you did. So if you push too far and he starts getting up and walking away and you get frustrated, Next time you want to practice, he's like, I don't want to do that. That made you all pissed. So we always want to end on a good one. So now I'm going to tell him that we're done staying. And what I'm doing is when I take this treat, I'm going to throw it about a foot away so he has to get up. And when he licks up the treat, I'm going to say the B-R-E-A-K word. Break. Remember, anytime the treat goes in the mouth, he should always see the remember after it goes in his mouth. Then he can go and do whatever he wants to do. Now, dogs do not generalize well. If you only practice stay here, he'll be able to stay here like a champ. You move there, you won't be able to do it. Sit. I know you want that treat, but I didn't ask for that, so you just give me a little passive training for this one. So the idea is very short intervals, and eventually we're going, eventually it's going to be like stay, and we count to like one minute. Eventually stay, and we count to five minutes. If he goes in there, go ahead and hit it again. Right there, yep. One more time. Oh, he got a twofer. So what, uh, and for this one, we're just when, we're rewarding him for doing what he, what we want him to do, but when he does on his own accord. Okay, so when you practice this stay, I'd like each one of you practice this a couple of times a day. And a great way to check yourself is, let's say you want to practice 50 stays in a day. Count up 50 treats, I've maybe 25 treats, tear them in half, and put them in a ramekin or a Ziploc bag somewhere. No, no, you just lay down. But that's, that's a cause for celebration, because he wouldn't do that before, and now he's just, he's, can't indicate he's more relaxed than laying down the kennel, and he did it all on his own. The other, the guardian's hired a trainer. He's a force-based trainer. He forced him. They told him he's like, force him in there, close the door, and leave him in there all night. All he did is freak out all night long. That's what he's practicing. Now he's practicing going in the kennel and chilling out. That's we love it. All right. So um, once you get up to the point where you can have five minutes, and you want him to do it five times in a row. So stay and you wait for five minutes with you sitting right there, and do it when you're watching TV. Have him right on the carpet right there. Do it, take advantage of it whenever, wherever possible. Come. All right, so now we're ready to start incorporating distance. Now when I do distance, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say stay, and I'm gonna take one step backwards, I would count to two, then come, take one step forward and say stay. And then I would repeat, taking one step backwards, count to two, and do that a couple times around. Now this is my arbitrary starting point. I take one step backwards, I, I double the number of steps in terms of the number of seconds. So I had two steps back, uh, I would take, I would count to four. Crash. So the idea is eventually we want to get to the point where we can buy about 15 feet away from him. And if you go all the way to five minutes before you start incorporating distance, it'll be easy. If you start adding distance while you haven't received that, reached that five minute mark, he's going to start coming towards you. So eventually when you get to about 15 feet or more, now you're ready to start playing outside the line of sight. So let's say that there's a wall that goes where this table is, or just let's say it's right here. So I walk back at, at 15, let's say this is 16 paces. Then I take one step here, I'm out of sight for one second, I come back, and then I walk back to him and I give him the treat and say stay. Then I walk back and this time I do it, I do that a couple times, 
making sure he's not moving. And you guys have cameras so you can watch him on your phone to make sure he's not getting up and coming towards you. If you do it right, again, duration first, then distance, he should just sit there. So then eventually you go and step out of sight for two seconds, then three, and so on and so forth. You want to do that until you get to the point where you can be out of sight for a couple of minutes. The next, and once you get to the point where you can be out of sight for about five minutes, I want you to start really, probably about two or three minutes, you can start using this. Stay over there on the black carpet, you get up and go over and pour yourself a drink of water, come back, and then release him. Stay, go to the bathroom, come back and release him. Eventually, when you get to the point where you're in your bedroom, you say, stay, you guys come out here and watch like a movie for a half an hour, and he's got to stay in there. Now he's practicing being apart from you in an easy capacity because he knows you're still here. He just can't see you and have direct contact or, uh, with you. But it's an easier version of it. And he's doing it like this, very relaxed. That's the whole point. If he's barking and whining in there, then we need to back up at the previous step. The whole point of this is that he enjoys it and he's relaxed and comfortable. Now, once we get to the point where we can uh, have him stay for like up to 10 or 15 minutes, then we're ready to start actually leaving the place. I gotta move my legs so I won't be able to lose my legs today. I am old, I can't sit on my knees that long, buddy. All right, so the next stage is, uh, and when you, when you come and go, uh, I'll get it, we'll, we'll do it while we're filming. Um, so, oh, Amazon, we'll pick up that later. All right, so basically what we wanna do next is we wanna actually practice leaving but in an easier capacity as well. Now we're not gonna tell him to stay when we leave. But at this point now, but by the time he gets to the point, he should be able to stay in your bedroom or stay out here while you guys are in your bedroom for like 10 minutes longer. I don't wanna give you an exact number because sometimes it's like three minutes, sometimes it might be 20 minutes. The maximum you will ever have to practice is two hours. Once you commit a dog can do something for two hours, they're good to go. Um, and you don't have to practice beyond that two hours. So the next stage is you're gonna get up without grabbing your keys or anything. You're not gonna say anything to him. And that's one thing I was getting to before. Go ahead and uh, once he goes in there, hit it. Perfect. Um, is when you get ready to leave and when you come home, don't say anything to him. Oh, you can be okay? Or when you come home, hey buddy! We confuse excited for happy when it comes to dogs, but excited is an unbalanced state of mind. They're more likely to make mistakes just like we are when we're overstimulated. So we make, make when you come and go and not event. So the next stage is what do we do? We're like, okay, well, let's go, let's go out to dinner real quick. We'll go down to Main Street and we'll come in. Maybe he's going to stay here for two minutes. He's going to lay down there again. Beautiful. Um, so um, that's way too long. So what we're going to do at first, we're going to just go out, we're going to close the door, we're going to wait two seconds and turn around, come back in and just go sit down. And then eventually the next time we do it, three seconds, four seconds, and you can, you can start skipping by like two seconds or five seconds, but don't start doing that right away. Is it still going? Should be still going, it's still in airplane mode. Uh, so I get messages, you can swipe them up. Um, so basically the idea is now we're helping him practice with us leaving while we're still inside. Um, oh, is it just running on juice? There you go, thank you. Um, you can move the camera a little bit if you need to. Um, so if we leave and we go out to dinner for half an hour, he might be able to stay for five minutes, but then he's going to start practicing freaking out. So what we want to do, and you guys have cameras, which makes it really a lot easier. So what you want to do is go outside and watch him on your phone. And don't push, don't wait for him to freak out. The whole point is to gradually elongate how long he stays home alone. But again, you're right outside here. And at first, you could actually open these so he can see you. I would probably recommend not doing that because if you do the stay properly, he's going to be comfortable. So uh, now we're just prog progressively waiting for longer and longer periods of time. And if he does start barking, you don't have to get a call from your landlord. You know you came in and you're like, oh, darn. Okay, that was uh, 20 and that was, uh, you know, 48 seconds. So he's not, he can't go past 45 seconds. So we back up and we practice that, that again. So the idea is keep on practicing this until eventually we get to the point where we can be out there for 15, 20, 30 minutes or whatever it is, and he's not barking or reacting. And anytime he does, we can come back in right away so we don't have to worry about the landlord. Hey, buddy. Um, but now we're essentially helping him practice being alone, practice being calm while being alone. At the same time, we're building up his confidence by petting with a purpose, passive training. You should also try to teach him some new tricks or commands. The more commands and skills that he have, that, uh, the confidence that comes with that is a natural prophylactic that will help him kind of shrug off other things. Um, one last thing is make sure that if he's scared, don't pet him while he's scared. Anything your dog is doing when you pet him is what you're reinforcing. A lot of dogs start crying, they're like, it's okay, baby, I'm right here. Oh, so crying is a great way to get you to come and rescue me. 
No, we want him to practice just, now what we're, what we're doing is rewarding him for going in the tree, the kennel on his own. We're not rewarding him for being sorry for him, we're rewarding him for accomplishments. And that makes him feel confident, builds his self-esteem. Yes, and you're very cute, I will give it up. You got a lot of cuteness. I teach puppy classes and you got it on tap. But one day, as I say in the movies, once you turn 30, you gotta get a personality buddy. Um, so the idea for this is, again, we desensitize him for the only individual triggers. We set him up for success by uh, helping him practice being alone. And again, I talked about earlier off camera about exercising him. When you start leaving, make sure you exercise before you do this uh, exercise, uh, before exercise before you do this exercise. Just make sure he has about 10 minutes to recover before you do anything else. And so that way you can kind of take a little bit of the oomph out of him. Um, but if you do this right, he won't mind hanging out by himself because you've helped him practice in doing it. Isn't that right, Cosmo? Well, this chill, uh, chill artist is Cosmo. These are tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that's separation anxiety and uh, by teaching it how to stay so it can practice being calm while it's alone.